Hi guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. So in this video, we are going to show you something that we talked briefly about in another video about UDIMs, yeah. about selection sets in ZBrush, and how you could use them in a production to get more details in one subtool that's sort of split off from the main subtool. This it's is something you need a lot, like it's specifically for like this character here. Like, let's say you're you sub the entire thing up, and the total is around uh, it's around five, six, ten million, and um, you need the head to be like thirty million, just because you have a crazy high res version of it. So um, you just need a lot more resolution on the head than you do on the body. Yeah, and let's say now we've reached our limit and we can't actually go any higher. Then yeah. the nice thing about this little strip solution is that. It enables us, us to bridge that gap between the two models. Yeah. So, this is not a perfect solution by any means, but it does it does help. It does kind of work. So this little strip here is just split off from the main body. I've just selected a strip around yeah. that's wide enough for me to cover this seam in the middle and yeah. any other changes I might have to do. There's really nothing fancy here. This is not an end this strip is not in any way based on UDIMS or anything like that. No, what but it's important to say though that this is based on UDIMS. Yes. So you know in this case we've UV'd our, our model and thought about okay if we need more resolution it makes sense to split it here so that mm -hmm. we can get more resolution in that part of the head. Absolutely. So Let's have this part now. So this part still has the model in it. So we'll just go ahead and we're just going to delete that part. So you do this under tool, modify topology and delete hidden. This is we use this a lot. And now for the body here, um, what we want to do, let's just go back in subdivision levels. So we want to split this out. So if you go to split group split, and this is under sub tool as well, you can see that now it's been split based on our poly groups and our poly groups are based on UDIMS. Yeah. So now we have that. And the nice thing about this is that now we can subdivide this up a lot higher than we could before because yeah. now it's detached. So one little issue when you're subdividing, when you've cut off a model like this, is that you'll see your edges will shrink. Mm -hmm. Just a quick fix for that is if you go under creasing and crease, you'll see you have this little extra line around and now it'll stay. Yeah. You know, it'll smooth, but it won't shrink. Now, some places you'll run into issues with this is if you have areas like this, that's a sharp edge. Actually, this is a bad example. I'll show you on the body. Um, you can get rounding where you don't want rounding to occur. Yeah. So let's take the body here. Here we have, oh, we'll do it on the strip instead. <laughs> so we'll do the same here. Um, go to creasing, crease this. Subdivide this up a few times. It's yeah. really important that you crease it, otherwise you get a massive gap between these two models. Yeah. So now you can see now that these have been subdivided, we have this split in the middle. This is a perfect split right now because yeah. you know they come from the same thing. If you were to render this, this would look the same. Mm -hmm. And it, like you could subdivide. Like right now, these have been subdivided to the same level, which is ideal because then the the details that we'll sculpt across are going to stay consistent. Yeah. Um, it just means that we will be able to subdivide it up higher. Maybe you wanted to maybe even split the body here, cut yeah. off the arms. I've done that before where yeah. I only had the feet because we needed some really high resolution stuff just for the feet. Yeah. So the general thing though, like you most most of the time need more resolution on the head and not on the body. Because mm. it's all that's always what you care about, right? Com the head compared to like the feet, normally that is the case. But yeah, in certain cases you have shot specific. Uh, you have shot specific uh, setups. So here is uh, just an example to show you what I was talking about before. The yeah. creasing here usually runs around in a loop, but here it has to break. So yeah. now it's been creased, but even when we subdivide it, we still see yeah. uh, some the mesh deform. So when you're doing your, your planning or whatever for the mesh, you'd ideally want a strip around. Uh, this mesh has been zero meshed. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we have a whole topic about why yeah. zero meshing is not always good. This would be an example of why zero meshing didn't, doesn't always work. Yeah. For so. a character like this, I mean, this is, this is my character, so I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of uh, uh, being a bit of hypocritical here. But if, <laughs> if, if I was doing this for production, not just a simple personal project, I would have definitely uh, done proper topology for him. I mean, even today, like if you were to redo this guy, I would have definitely done proper topology for him here. Just because there is no reason not to. So it doesn't matter, but um, now I just, let's say we wanted to get some more details 
just along this ridge here, right? Mm. This is right where our seam is gonna be. So because we'll you can you can sculpt you can sculpt stuff on both uh, on both the sub tools as long as it's not going across uh, the seam. The problem is once you want let's say you want something going across the seam like a scar or there's a pattern or you know something like that, then sculpting on the strip is is the way to go. Yeah. And this has multiple purposes. Like it can both serve as a fixer for if you mess up the edges between the two meshes, mm -hmm. or it can serve this purpose, which is sculpting details across two high-res uh, meshes. Yeah. So super nice sculpting there. Yeah, and you're <laughs> pretty, pretty good, Morgan. Yeah, that's why I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we have our body strip, and the way it works is that we want to project down from our body strip to the to the head and and the body. So let's start with the body here. Like again, this is not a perfect solution. No. Um, I've used it in production before with no issues in terms of the seam, but you can run into small seam issues yeah. with this. So let's just have a look. You're probably gonna be fine with seams if you're layering essentially a bunch of shit on top of this. Yeah, noise masks yeah. that pretty well. Yeah, so if you do, if you have like advanced, <laughs> if you have seams like this and um, you know the way to fix it. I mean, obviously, the way to fix it is to do this. Is to do to maybe like fix this in Mari or something like mm. clone it out. But let's say you don't. That's not an option. You normally can't see this in shots with. Uh, this is gonna sound a bit hacky. With a lot of motion blur, <laughs> with a lot of stuff layered on top of this in our channels like color spec, bump, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You generally won't be able to see it. But that's film. You know, that's, so that's that's we can get away with a lot of things. Yeah. So for this one here, we just gotta make sure that our top sub tool that we're projecting from is visible. The bottom one is visible. I've just uh, isolated it or yeah. soloed it just so I can just see this. And then you just come under project and you just say project all. And now we have our details here. You see, we do get some artifacting at the edge. This is something that you could mask out. You could potentially store a morph target actually. Yeah. You could do it. Let's do that. So we have this part of the mesh and we go to morph target. We store the morph target and... The morph target just stores, essentially it's a blend shape of the model. It's just a copy of the model. So now you can get back to where it was beforehand. So with the morph brush BMO for the hotkey there, just disable dynamic there. Then we can now paint out whatever mm. we don't want projected over. Yeah. Um, this is quite a handy feature when you do see artifacting like this. Morph um, target is something you, you, you just kind of like, once you, once you learn to love them, yeah. you have no idea how you, how you ever got out <laughs> without them. So There's now I'm going to do the same thing on the head here. So yeah, maybe store a morph target beforehand as well in this one, because then yep. you can just effectively show. Store morph target, and we'll just project down again. There we go. So again, we get a little bit of artifacting here, but we do see this. So let's see our result from these two projections. So we have a little bit of a difference here, but generally, you know, the details actually match. Yeah. This. I would almost with 100% certainty, certainty say that you're not going to see once you generate these meshes. Yeah, just look at how close up you are now. Yeah, and look, I mean, the thing is, it's not even a, it's not even a height difference. No. It, it is a difference in the uh, X and Z direction, yeah. not the Y direction. As so such. you're probably fine. But I mean, that's it. You could also just fix this by hand, you know, straight up just going through this and uh, using the move brush or something like that. Mm. Uh, instead of uh, what you can also do here, instead of morphing this out, you could. It's also possible just to mask this out beforehand. Yeah. Like doing a soft mask. I mean, that's whatever you prefer, right? Yeah. So let's say we do that for this part now. Let's say uh, I only want to match the details right here, yeah. and we know our mask or our poly strip goes down to here. So just mask that, invert our mask, and make sure the right sub tool is enabled. <laughs> And then we'll project that. So now we're only getting the go. projection here. And again, now these two should line up pretty well. Yeah, with no cleanup whatsoever. Mm. So again, not saying this is a perfect solution, but but it is a solution. This is this is essentially you want more resolution on one part of the body. Uh, it requires a bit of planning yeah, because, yeah. particularly in, in if you're in a production. This this becomes problematic if you want to let's say you want to update the UVs or topology for one of these guys here. Mm. This is why we split this up based on UDIMs because if you split this up based on UDIMs, you can just export out. Uh, you can just export out that, those UDIMs again later on, and the UVs will update. This becomes a real pain in the ass when these have been split up just based on arbitrary cuts. That's really not ideal. Yeah. So tr please try to split this up based on the UDIM or based on the UV shell or 
based on based on something which which is not just random. Based a little on something, bit of planning goes yeah, a long way. But split it up based on something which you can reproduce very easily. Yeah. On something where you can update a UV and topology fairly easily. And um, another but, another quick use for this is, uh, like we mentioned in the beginning, it's just for fixing. Mm -hmm. So let's say, I mean, now you can see I move these in a little bit with a move brush and I actually get fairly close to a point where I, I would almost guarantee that we're not going to see this. Yeah. So, but let's say you're doing some really nice detailing on either side of these and then accidentally, without noticing, uh -oh. you start doing this, right? And you maybe you sculpt for a couple hours and you go back and you realize, ah, oh, crap, I've actually sculpted <laughs> there. So we can go ahead and just mask out just around the border mm -hmm. like that. Well, on you can also, um, as a general tip here as well, you can also just smooth the mask by control clicking on mm, the model true. as well. Yeah, Cause then you that. just get a slightly softer mask. Let's see again, enable our little strip, project all. And now we should be closer to yeah. our original one. It's yeah. not going to be perfect. You know, this is more of a fix hacky yeah. solution. Like I said, I've used it in production before. Didn't see it. No. Didn't see the scene. Um, like Henning said, there are there is things to consider such as motion blur and noise. Mm -hmm. um, whatever texture goes on top of this tends to mask these things out yeah. pretty well. And, and also, when we're doing this kind of stuff as well, like you said, you're planning this out. You're planning where the seams are. So we would try to avoid doing some kind of crazy sculpting across the seams. You would, oh, yeah. So I mean, the best best solution here is just not to do it. You would probably try to find a place where you could hide your scene. I mean, obviously on this character, that's impossible. You could maybe do it in the yeah. back of the yeah, head Yeah, I would here. probably do it in the back of the head because then you wouldn't really, see, really no. see it, but then you would have to plan your UVs around that as well. Yeah, and maybe, but maybe it doesn't allow it. Maybe you are required to put your UV yeah. or your, your split in your UDIMS right here. Yeah. And then this solution can be for you. You can go in fix it in, yeah. in uh, Mudbox even. Like yeah. you could have everything together in Mudbox because they handle higher subdivision. Yeah. Um, you could also do it in Mari. Yeah. Uh, we just clone out yeah. the thing. Um, so there are a couple of solutions to get around this, but as a general rule, quick fix, quick fix with planning though, uh, <laughs> yeah. this is a solution. Yeah. So I'd be very curious to hear if you guys have any other solutions mm, to this yeah, problem, because this is a fairly common issue and this is not an issue which will be solved by increasing the poly count limit in ZBrush. Like let's say you, let's say they've increased the limit to like uh, 200 million now. Like you still reach a point where, sorry, you just need more resolution on this finger. Yeah, you know, yeah. you still, <laughs> you still need more resolution on certain parts of the model. Yeah. What, what ways are your guys' ways of doing this? Is there any, any cool ways of doing this? Yeah, I'd be curious Please to hear Please let that. us know. So yeah, that's just a quick little tip on how to fix your seams. Mm. So if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe.